Welcome to your Barbados Today evening news update for Thursday, January 13th. The mother of 25-year-old Tremaine Lawrence, who took his life yesterday, is still trying to come to terms with the death of her son. Police reported that Tremaine was found hanging in the living room of a house at Bakehoff Road, St. Michael. Catherine Lawrence tells Barbados Today they were very close and she will miss him dearly. Uh, Tremaine was a nice person. I know he was loving, caring. He always tell me, Mama, I love you. Mm. <laughs> I used to love you back too. You know, he do things to me. If I want doing anything, this, if I want anything to do, and he see me doing it, mm. he has come and help. No matter what it is. You know, we did, we did things together. We did a lot of things together. So he was, he was, he was, <sighs> to me, he was close. Mm. He was the most close to me. You know, to me, to all my children, call it, he's, he's my game more strong, but he was so hard. There's cheese on, he was so hard. There's, mm. but no big deal with that. And we had a lot of talks, you know, a lot of talks, talks, just having conversations. And <sighs> our relationship, I think it was just, I know we was so close. I don't know if you call him more than some shit. It was that close. It was like best friends or something. So, you know, I mean, you know, and if he was going through any trouble, it was telling to talk to me. He was going through trouble before, but I didn't know he trouble was over the knee. That pushed this far. And it hurt me. It scared me to see that he did this. Because if he even gave me any indication, it would have been so bad. To see that he did this before even giving me indication. Even before, he would talk to me and see what I mean. I didn't feel it was a situation where I know I could talk to you and it would put something in his head and he said that life is precious and it's free. Life is free, you know? But he didn't say anything. Double-digit growth is on the horizon this year for Barbados, according to data from the Central Bank. A pre-election economic and fiscal update report dated January 10, which is required to be published no later than five working days after nomination day, Forecast growth of about 14.2% this year, while putting last year's growth at a modest 1.6%. The report says government's revenue and expenditure are to increase by the end of the current fiscal year, ending March 31. Revenue targets now stand at $2.63 billion for fiscal year 2021-2022, due mainly to an expected increase of about $24 million in tax revenue, while it is estimated that expenditure will reach just over $31.3 billion at that time. According to the report, tourism remains the main driver of the economic growth. Current forecasts anticipates that travel and tourism should lead to arrivals of around 78% of pre-pandemic levels during 2022 and a return to pre-crisis levels by the 2023 winter season. The report, however, notes that the forecast for Barbados hinges on the speed of the global economic recovery, the effective execution of planned medium to large-scale investment projects, and the world's ability to manage the COVID-19 pandemic. In other news this Thursday, new COVID-19 cases climbed to 577, 241 males and 326 females following 2,439 tests conducted by the Best of Santos Public Health Laboratory. The positive cases comprise 110 persons under the age of 18 and 467 who were 18 years and older. The number of people in isolation facilities are 100, while 4,181 are in home isolation. To news from the campaign trail, the incumbent MP for St. Philip North, Dr. Sonia Brown, is ready to serve her constituents yet again. Addressing supporters at a spot meeting in Merrick St. Philip on Wednesday night, Brown highlighted some of her achievements since taking office in 2018, especially responding to the needs for housing following the passage of Hurricane Elsa last year. I fought, fought for people who had poor housing in St. Philip North, fought till they quarrel a little bit. And houses are now being built. Houses are now being replaced. I might mean, not that talk about Chinese houses. The point is, it's houses. The point is, it's houses, Jenlin. I am happy for you, by the way. And that continues. After the hurricanes, I went into the communities and where we, we, we handed out tarpaulins, which was a temporary solution. But that went on, and many people, a couple of shops nearby, that had damages, were supplied with material to start their own fixing. And those who did not have resources to fix their own homes, they're now in the process of having them fixed by rural uh, housing and so on. These are the things that I have done, and I did not use it as a photo op because it seems that for the opposition, photo ops are very important.
Over in St. Michael Northeast, the man trying to unseat Prime Minister Mia Motley is calling for a change in the tax structure to help alleviate the financial burdens on the most vulnerable citizens on the island. Damien Griffith made his case while speaking at a spot meeting in Bush Hall on Wednesday night. Much was made about the NSRL. It was blamed for everything under the sun and every problem that we had. But in reality, the NSRL was a fairer tax, and the economists now say this, because the burden of that tax was not put on the poorest people. Instead, it was a tax that was absorbed by businesses and in part passed on to the consumers, but no one alone bore the brunt of the tax. We are now faced with a water bill that went in the last three and a half years from $30 minimum to about $85 minimum. Barbados needs urgent changes to its electoral process to advance its development, so says the deputy leader of the Alliance Party for Progress, Lenny Eastman. And according to the five-time political candidate, those changes must include a vote for third parties. She's offering a new brand of representation. What I'm bringing to you is representation that actually involves you. Most of the politicians these days do not understand that representation means talking to you, finding out what your concerns are, and seeking to implement them. It is not having in your own head what you feel is important and are going about doing it. I understand. I understand what my role would be if you gave me that opportunity. I understand that it is about representing your needs in the same way that you spoke to me about the flooding and I sought to do something about it. That is what representation is about. There's regional and international news after this short break. Hi, my name is Michelle Hines and I own a company called HM Novelties. I have three children, two of which are under the age to get the vaccine and that makes them vulnerable. And the eldest, she is vaccinated and that's a good thing because all she wants to do is hang with her friends. I take care of my 80 year old mum, and she has many comorbidities. And I love my mum, and I would not want for anything to happen to her. I am one of the ones that suffered absolutely no symptoms for either the first or the second jab. When you have the vaccine, you have a weapon to fight against this virus, to fight against this beast. 95% of my friends and family are vaccinated and that literally makes me feel secure. Let's roll up our sleeves and get back to living. To the regional scene, Guyana has recorded nearly 1,200 COVID-19 cases in the last 24 hours. Health Minister Dr. Frank Anthony suggests the spike is due to the Omicron variant, but samples are yet to be sent to the Caribbean Public Health Agency to confirm the highly infectious strain. Right now, we have 8,680 active cases. So in Region 1, we have 90 cases. Region 2, we have 201 cases. Uh, region 3, we have 1,004 cases. Region 4, we have 5,378 cases. Region 5, 245 cases. Region 6, 639 cases. Region 7, 266 cases. Region 8, 18 cases. Region 9, 300 cases, and Region 10, 539 cases. We have selected the samples. We are now at the process where the agencies are making the arrangements for the shipping. So as soon as those arrangements are concluded, uh, we will be able to send the samples. 
On the international scene, huge numbers of French teachers went on strike on Thursday, with the biggest teachers' union saying half of primary schools were closed as staff demanded clarity from the government on coronavirus measures. In what was said to be the largest walkout by French teachers in decades, marchers filled the streets across the country Thursday to protest the government's changing COVID rules in the classroom. With the majority of the nation's teachers in the streets, union officials said the one-day strike forced about half of the country's elementary schools to shut their doors. Teachers are furious about what they say are the government's unworkable and confusing COVID rules, which have changed twice in just the last week. I'm here as a teacher and the mother of a student because we're tired of being despised by the education minister. The health protocols are useless. They've been changed 50 times. The latest change came on Monday when the government announced that students exposed to a classmate with the virus wouldn't immediately be sent home or be required to be tested at a pharmacy. Late Thursday, French Education Minister Jean-Michel Blanquer met with union officials to hear their demands for clear rules and more protections, such as extra masks and rapid tests. That's news, but for the very latest, visit our website at www.barbidastoday.bb. You can also subscribe to our e-paper, email updates, or like us on Facebook. And sign up for our breaking news alerts via WhatsApp. We're also on Izumi Media and Bus Terminals, as well as Screenplay at supermarkets and gas stations near you. You can also hear us on Mix 96.9 FM and Capital Media HD 99.3 FM.